The sun doesn't shine at night, and it's not windy all the time. So to create an energy grid that is mostly powered by renewables, storage is essential. And to make sure that the stored energy is optimally used, digital technologies will play a key role. Most people think of energy storage as batteries. The batteries they buy at the convenience store. Their phone battery. The batteries found in their car. But when talking about a power grid, energy storage refers to any method that allows the storing of energy for later use. There are plenty of ways. You can actually store renewable energy with water, air, or hydrogen. Let's look at some of the main storage technologies. I probably intrigued some of you when I said that you can store energy with water. I was referring to pumped energy storage. This is actually a mature technology. It accounts for over 90% of power storage worldwide, according to the International Hydropower Association. Pumped energy storage entails moving water, usually by pumping it, to a reservoir located on higher ground. At night, or when it's not windy, the water can be released onto a turbine to produce hydroelectricity. Compressed air is based on a similar idea. When power is abundant, excess energy is used to compress air into a large chamber, like a natural cave. When extra power is needed, the air is heated so it can expand into a turbine powering a generator. In commercial deployments, compressed air has achieved up to 80% energy efficiency. A possible downside of compressed air is that it requires the use of a fuel. This can make compressed air less environmentally friendly than other storage methods. Green hydrogen can solve this issue. Green hydrogen is made by using renewable power to electrolyze water. When combusted, it emits water vapor, not carbon. The gas will play a more and more central role as we move to renewables. It can be used to heat up compressed air, to power cars and other vehicles, or to produce electricity at thermal power stations. Currently, using renewables to produce hydrogen isn't common though. Another emerging method of energy storage is the flywheel. This involves using energy to spin a wheel inside a container at extremely high speed. When stored power is required, the wheel becomes a turbine that relies on its own momentum to generate power. One of the main advantages of the flywheel is that it can start generating power in mere milliseconds. This enables instant changeovers once wind or solar energy becomes unavailable. Finally, we come to batteries. The two main types are lit acid and lithium ion. Lit acid batteries have one advantage over lithium ion. They cost less to buy, but lithium ion ones require less maintenance, which means that over time, they might end up cheaper. They're also much smaller for the same amount of power, and they charge faster. As a result, most of the batteries used to store solar and wind energy are lithium ion type. As mentioned at the beginning of this chapter, ICT will play a key role in optimizing our use of stored power. At a pumped energy storage facility, sensors and high-definition cameras can supply detailed real-time data to the control room so that faults are detected early. ICT can remotely gather data about network batteries and with the help of AI, flag those that appear to have defects. This eliminates the risk of lithium-ion battery fire. More importantly, ICT enables grid operators to know at all times how much energy is available from storage, be it from pumped energy, large stationary batteries, or car batteries with power to spare. Researchers worldwide are looking at all sorts of new ways to store the energy that grids, powered by renewables, will depend on. If you're an engineer or a chemist, energy storage is one of the most promising fields of research right now. And that's it for this lesson. In the next chapter, we'll look at smart green vehicles.